The first quarter of 2024 is over and we've got our first full round of companies that have reported their earnings. So the question is, where does everyone lay? Well, over the next 10 minutes, I'm going to take you through what I consider to be the five most expensive and the five least expensive stocks in my own personal portfolio, the anti-fragile portfolio. My name is Brian Stoffel, and obviously, as of the time of this writing, I do own all the shares of the companies I'm about to tell you about. One other note is that all of these numbers were good as of March 31st, 2024. But of course, the question might be, why even care about what it, what my numbers are? Well, one, I think accountability matters. But two, it is worth pointing out that over the past nine plus years, this portfolio has handily outperformed both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ Composite Index. It's also worth pointing out that in on July 29th of 2023, I did my first version of this. It was in tweet form. You can see the tweet right there where I ordered everything from most to least expensive in my portfolio. So how did those companies do? It's been about eight months and I'm a long-term investor. So valuation plays a smaller part of my overall investing philosophy than other things like the barbell approach, financial fortitude, even company culture. But over the short term, valuation plays a huge role. So it is worth going back. And this is the oldest example I have. Again, eight months, eight plus months, take it for what it is. But back then on July 29th, I called out the five most expensive stocks, which you can see right here, and the five least expensive stocks, which you can see on the right. Now, between that time and the middle of the first week of April this year, the S&P 500 returned about 14%. So how did these two small little baskets do? Well. The most expensive ones were actually down 2%, while the five cheapest ones were actually up 46%. Now, that's an N of one, so take it for what you will, but that is an example of what you can do when you look at valuation. So with that being said, let's jump in. Number five and the most expensive is MongoDB. Now, when I was filming this, the price was about $342 a share. I performed a reverse discounted cash flow model which I did for most of these companies um, with an ideal free cash flow rate. And by my own calculations, the thing to know is that I think that the company needs to grow their top line by about 25% per year. And even over the next three years, it's only 22%. So that comes in at number five. At number four is Cloudflare. It was about $95 a share at the time of this recording. By my estimates, about 31% top line growth is baked in over 10 years only expecting 29% growth over the next three. HubSpot, this one's been in the news a whole bunch because Alphabet slash Google is considering acquiring the company. It was trading at about $630 per share when I made these slides, obviously a little bit higher now because of those Google rumors, but look, 26, probably even 27, 28% growth now priced in based on uh, that potential buyout. And I, I only see it growing at about 20, 21% over the next three years, let alone the next five. So that lands at number three. Number two most expensive is Shopify, trading at about $78 a share, expected to grow 25% per year for a decade is what's baked into the price. Analysts only expecting about 20%. And number one most expensive is Intuitive Surgical, trading at about $350, $15 per share. By my calculations, about 21% annual growth is baked into the stock's price, whereas analysts are only expecting 14% growth going forward. Now, all of that being said, it's worth pointing out that I think all five of those are high quality, anti-fragile companies that I don't plan on selling out of at all. Valuation is something I use for position sizing, not for inclusion or exclusion within the anti-fragile portfolio. Why? Because these are anti-fragile companies. They have a wide moat, optionality, financial fortitude, management with skin in the game. All that being said is to say that I'm still going to own all of these stocks, but now let's turn the page and look at what I consider to be the five cheapest stocks in the portfolio. And coming in at number five is Tesla. Yes, I know that they just missed their delivery numbers. Shares are down a whole bunch. By my calculations, the company needs to grow its top line by about 16% per year over the next 10 years in order to justify today's price and get a market matching return, if nothing else. Those are very low numbers for Tesla. Now, don't get me wrong. It has its battles ahead of it, but with full self-driving, the potential additions from Cybertruck and Semi, the energy storage business, not to mention all of the possibilities that exist with AI. It seems like a pretty fair deal at this price. Don't get me wrong, lots of downside, 
lots of upside as well. Coming in at number four is Snowflake, trading about $154 per share. By my calculations, even if you include dilution, the top line means to grow at about 23% per year over the next 10 years. I'm expecting it to grow at about 25% over just the next three years. I really believe that what's going on with this company is that uh, former CEO Slootman, Frank Slootman, left the office and wanted to set up current CEO very well and did so by lowering guidance so that he could just focus on executing at the company and not satisfying investors. We'll see whether or not I'm correct or not, but it comes in at number four. Number three is Amazon trading for about $183 per share. Look, Amazon's a tough beast to value. I like to look at price to operating cash flow or how much cash the company brings in from running its own business. And we ignore things like depreciation and amortization, yes, but in Amazon's case, investments like whether Rivian stock went up or down, which really affects its earnings. Right now, trading at about 22 times operating cash flow, its historical average is about 25. So I think that there's decent upside there and in a market that's really been doing very well. It seems like a pretty good deal to me. Coming in at number two is Transmedics. Now, this is the only company on the list that is actually a stage two company. It's not even profitable. It's not even free cash flow positive yet. This company makes a machine that can keep heart, lung, and liver alive for longer so that when they are going from someone's body to a donee, a donor to a donee, it can stay alive for longer. Now, to do this, I did a serviceable, addressable market calculation with the end date of 2028. Long and short of it is, is that after all those calculations, what I saw was a base case annualized return of about 17% per year over the next few years. That's market beating. The market average is 10%. So that comes in at number two. Now, there's a whole bunch of different ways that I've gone about calculating this. And you might be wondering, well, how do I know which tool to use? Or how do I know which companies I should be investing in? Well, Brian Froley and I want to help you with that, which is why on April 11th uh, at noon Eastern time, we are hosting an absolutely free webinar, the valuation spe mindset spectrum from Buffett to Zell, how super investors value businesses. This promises to be a highly educational hour that you can spend with us and have time at the end to ask questions. So if you'd like to register for that, just click the link in the show notes below. If you register, you'll also get sent a recording of it if you can't make it live. Number one cheapest stock by my estimation in the anti-fragile portfolio is Mercado Libre trading at about $1,500 a share. By my calculations, even with a much lower free cash flow margin moving forward, I believe that the company only needs 11% growth per year over the next decade to justify today's price. And over the next three years alone, it's supposed to grow 22%. So that's where I think the company will be. No surprise, this is one of my highest uh, allocation stocks in the anti-fragile portfolio. So that's where my stocks landed. Let me know what you think in the show notes below. And as I'm going to try to, I will check back in on the portfolio in 90 days, let you know how the results have been over the past and let you know where things sit at that point in time. Until then, Brian, out.